Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we're glad to see we have so many here tonight. This is kind of an experiment while we're starting late. We're going to be doing, what are we, live streaming. And so this is the experimental part, and then this microphone that I have from Ray is another experimental part, and we'll see whether or not this thing really records. And the next experimental part is our subject tonight, QRSS. For you folks that are not Morse code aficionados, QRS means send more slowly. But if you append a little s to it, that means send really slow. And that's what we have here tonight. Who cares about QRS? Why do we care about QRS? Yes. It's another phase of communication which allows us to communicate with extremely low power. We're talking about milliwatts and microwatts. And this is the kind of power, yes, John? Or high noise level? Or high noise level, yes. So what we're going to be looking at is the, uh, a particular QRSS transmitter. This is one that uh, I put together, and I got Mel's help with a really nice cover on it. It's all engraved and has letters in it. It's, you just go to a, uh, a CAD program, and it cuts out the holes, and it does all this stuff works really nice. So we'll be taking a look at this in just a minute. Let's see what we got here. There's the inside of it. Uh, it's a kit, but part of the kit that has the uh, surface mounted components is already done. Uh, you can wind the coils and you get to solder some of the other pieces in, but the real tough surface mounted stuff is already done. That's what's inside of this box right here. This is what it looks like on the screen. You can see it has the frequency on there. It has the call sign. Well, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Uh, call sign here, the frequency there. And uh, this is a, the uh, FSK mode that it's operating in. Hook it up to a uh, power supply. The antenna goes on here and out the window it goes. It's really critical to have a good antenna because when you're talking about these micro wattages, we got to have a good antenna so we don't lose a lot of it in a, uh, a poor connection. This went into a buddy pole, which was out in the backyard. This happens to be a, uh, an L, if you can see the, uh, the vertic the uh, one piece here and then the horizontal run that runs out there. It worked quite well because we were successful. Here's another piece of it. Uh, this is out in the backyard. You can notice the uh, tree with the English ivy on it right there. All you tree huggers, please ignore that. <laughs> now, here we have K6 BFA going out over the air at some, it, this went out at some milliwatt power level. And you can see it there, the uh, uh, those that you know the case uh, that no Morse code, da dit da, da dit 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 dit, and so on across the screen. So this is what it looks like on my screen when the uh, transmitter actually transmits. It's it's a very strong signal. That's why you see it uh, spiking in that particular way. But let's go to the other end of the scale here. Um, Oh, that line there just shows you what you want to be reading. Uh, if you can see in between here, this is the, sim the symbols that are actually being transmitted. These little spikes on either end are kind of like an overdrive that's affecting the uh, receiver in the shack. Now, okay, this is where skill comes in and patience. This down at the bottom that you see is what we've been looking at before. This is what we're looking for. These are the signals that are captured in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And this is put on their website. We go to their website and read this. Now, I think you have to have a good imagination. And that's where uh, Bob Bowes came in. He and I worked on this project uh, first as we put it together. He was at his house and I was at my house 
and we were talking back and forth and he says oh I can see it here I can see yes there it is you are re actually being recorded in Las Cruces and I'm looking there I said I don't think so Bob I don't see it well uh, I still don't see it <laughs> but let me say that it is there and we're going to take another look there it is right there now if we take a look at it now that you know that it's and I'm trust me it's there da dit da da dit 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 uh, kind of disappears there and then we pick it up again over here I do have that same thing on this chart here and I'll have it available you can take a look at it. I if I pass it around you'll be paying attention to something else pay attention to me this is the length of time it took to send my call sign. It took five and a half minutes from the time that we hit transmit wow. until the thing goes all the way through and comes up to the end. And during that time, we are in f fact, or Bob is really looking at, there it goes now. Let's see if we can, oh, I got it. And there you can see where the six is. Uh, a little imagine, oh no, the B is, looks pretty good. There the, there's the F and there is the A. So if, if you look really carefully, actually it doesn't come through as good here as it does on that card, but there's a, a dit, dit, da, dit, dit, da. And that's where Bob Bowers came in. He says, yes, I can see it there, and he explained it to me and told me where to look. So we got da, 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 and then right across that line. I'm glad I had him because I, we probably wouldn't be talking here tonight. We'd have been, I've been trying to f make it work again. So there it is, five and a half minutes. And then also, if you'll notice, this one was picked up in Norway. And it was uh, about the same time frame. Let's see, the fifth. Yeah, it was the same, uh, the same night. We were picked up in Norway and then in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The Norway one is right there. And... Um, uh, let's see here there it goes right there if you if we look right there da dit da da dit 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 da dit 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 da dit dit da all right you have to stay off of the coffee before you do this exercise because it takes a, a lot of concentration and you don't want to have your eyeballs twitching. What frequency is this? This is 10, let me see what it is. It's 10 point, uh, hang on just a second here. Um, you'll have to come up and read the screen. I don't have my glasses. Is it on there? It's, what, it, what is yours? I think it's 10.140. 10.140. And it, when you see it, and you think how little power you've actually put into the equipment and when you get these this feedback you say, this is pretty exciting stuff so oh there we go again gosh I love that call sign I guess I can't believe this, is this audible? no it's not like flashing light. Oh, right. actually it's what you see it's just just you're looking at a image that's coming from Las Cruces or Norway in this particular case and this is the image that's on their website and then you access their website and you can see this stuff on there uh, keep in mind now this call sign takes five and a half minutes so it's pretty tough to you know it'd be pretty tough to sit there and and see this even progress at uh, you know in real time <laughs> yeah, yeah one one did so that's my half of this show and then the second half of the show is Mel and he has his QRSS equipment here we're going to take a 30 second technical break to hook Mel up and hook okay, his evening, computer everybody. up to this projector. <clears throat> Some of you probably remember about uh, eight years ago I designed this little QRP radio for the build something uh, activity that we did or the you know, build a transmitter back in uh, July of 2000, 2008 or 2009. Uh, this is the radio. 
And when I brought this in, I had already got most of everything working, except somebody pointed out that there was a USB port in the back. Well, at that time, the USB port didn't do anything. But it is actually wired into the computer that's in here. The last couple of weeks, I decided to um, get back into the software and see if I could get that uh, QS or that USB port to work. And so I've been writing the software for this, and I've been writing software on the uh, computer here. And I'm not going to explain everything because we really don't have time. But <clears throat> basically, what I'm going to do, hopefully is get this thing turned on and I'm going to run this little program that I wrote this is something I've been working on I started off with a uh, kind of a hello world kind of situation where I had like just to get the computer to work I wrote a protocol that was my own little protocol that I could use to co or to uh, talk to this thing and my goal was to basically get the configuration out of the radio onto the computer screen so that you could actually see the whole configuration so <clears throat> I ended up writing this little program what you can see on here are the different functions that I have built into this there's a small keyer inside which is designed for either a straight key a bug or an iambic key if I select the iambic, it'll actually bring up another box which allows you to select either the iambic A or the B version. <clears throat> you can also select the mode, either CW or CWR, which is actually a, a very important thing if you have a direct conversion receiver that has both sidebands coming in simultaneously. And when you're tuning the radio around, you can actually tune you can pick up the same station on two different places on the dial. And, and the idea is to tune it so that you get the right uh, frequency that the person is operating on. And you can hit that, there's a little button on here that you can select either CW or CWR. If you hit the button and nothing changes, then you're right on frequency. But if you hit the button and all of a sudden the signal disappears, then you're not on frequency anymore. So you got to kind of tune around to find it again. It's just an extra step you have to do with a very simple receiver. Uh, this receiver actually has no tuned circuits in it with the exception of an input filter. And uh, it basically does the bandpass by the audio frequency that the uh, audio amplifier set up for. But anyway, let me uh, see if I can uh, read the configuration from the radio. And what it did, it read the configuration. I've got my username coded in, which actually appears on the front panel. It's set up, in this case, for the iambic uh, B key, so I can use a, a paddle key with it. Um, I can set the uh, key speed either uh, several different, um, different levels that I might want to operate on. I have a whole variety of uh, key speeds that I can select. Or if I want to, I can change the uh, tone. On a direct conversion receiver, the tone is actually the separation between the transmit and the receive. So if you have, uh, let's say this one's set up for 600 hertz, it means my transmitter oscillator is at one frequency and the receive oscillator for the, the, uh, VC or for the uh, local oscillator is actually off by 600 hertz. That's how close they are. And then the other functions that I have built in here are for setting the thing up for other parts of the system. Now I can also, let's see if I can do this. Let's see, come on. There we go. I'm not used to this because I usually use a mouse. Just a minute. <clears throat> zero, zero. Let's say I want to set the frequency. I should be able to set the frequency and this should change on the front here if I do this right hopefully yep 7050 um, if I want to go to the uh, 40 meter band or the 20 meter band let's say I put in uh, 
14 megahertz. I can set that frequency, and it does that. Yes, sir. Can you uh, make that uh, window fill the screen so people can actually read it? If I do, it won't be any bigger. It's not going to make all the text bigger. It just makes the it'll just make the screen bigger. Also, what is CWR? What's that? What is CWR? That's where the uh, in one version CW has the transmitter frequency at at above the received frequency. And if you put it in the CWR, it puts the transmit frequency below the receive frequency. So it just switches the oh. band, or not the band, but the, uh, the side band. So anyway, I'm able to get this to talk. Now the other thing I wanted to do, just out of curiosity, was can I actually get this to work with FL Digi? <laughs> so uh, let me get out of this for a second. I'm, we'll see if this actually works. loading the program. And let me see here. Where's the mouse? Configure. Rig control. The cat. Um, in order to do this, what I actually did was a was write a um, an XML file. <laughs> what that is, it's basically, it looks a little bit like an HTML file with a bunch of tags and some text on it. FL Digi has set up a, uh, a system where you can actually control any receiver or any transceiver using this mechanism. Basically what they're doing is allowing you to select the frequency, the mode, which is the, in this case I only have two, the bandwidth for the, the unit, in this case, I only have one bandwidth. It's about 1,200 hertz. And um, also to operate the push to talk. And let's see. But let's anyway, see the idea this, is uh, that I can actually write here. an XML file to control the receiver from FL Digi. I had this working at home. And one of the things that I was able to do is actually look at a PSK31 signal. Um, since I don't have a way to transmit through this without the key, so I'd have to manually operate the key through FL Digi. But um, you can actually use CW and follow uh, some of the digital nodes. In PSK31, it worked pretty well. And I was able to decode a message that came from France and another guy down in Texas that were talking about the Hurricane Harvey. So anyway, that's my little side project. <laughs>